Hi everyone, in today's video, we'll be looking at how we can take our boring boxed width layout and transforming it into a beautiful full width hybrid layout in Elementor in just a few easy steps. So if that's something that interests you, then let's jump right into it. This video is an improvement to all the previous videos in the playlist. All you need to do is copy the CSS, then add in a few class names and you're done. If you're a Bricks user, don't worry. I have a video coming out soon, which will show you how to do it within Bricks. But this video is focused on Elementor users. So now let's go ahead and see the CSS we will be using. Recently, I've been playing around with core frameworks as my CSS framework, and I'm trying to see how to implement it within Elementor. So the CSS is used within the core frameworks, but you can use it wherever you feel comfortable, like in your code snippets plugin or your child theme. But all we need to do is add in the CSS. Then if you like, you can change a couple of parameters. So this is your maximum width for your container. Then we change the default value for how much percentage you want for your box width and the gap as well as the gutter. So those are the four values that we need. Then we need the class names and that's it. We don't need to change any other thing. So let's see how we can do it in Elementor. So here we are back on our Elementor edit page. This is the demo we're working with. So let me go ahead and expand it. Currently, it's within the box content area where we have the text content taking up 60% of the width, whereas the image takes up 40%. But we want the image to stretch to the edge of the screen while keeping the text content within the box content area. So now let's see how we can do it. So let me minimize it. For this tutorial, we'll be using the Flexbox containers. So make sure under Elementor, Settings, and then Features, you've activated Flexbox containers. If you have that activated, then let's go down to the bottom to click on the plus icon, choose the Flexbox, and make sure you are using the two column flex. So now we'll apply some settings to the parent container. We'll make sure the parent container is selected. Then we we'll start with the layout tab. Make sure you change the content width from boxed to full width. Then make sure the width itself is set to 100%. Then the next thing we need to change is the gap. So make sure that the column gap is set to zero, but then the row gap, we we'll set it to a value that we want when the layout is stacked on mobile, how much space do we want between our image and the text content? So for this example, I'll just use 20 pixels or maybe 40 pixels because the default by Elementor is 20 pixels, but let me just make it bigger and say 40 pixels. But to make sure the column set to zero gap. So now that we have that set up, the next thing you need to do is go over to the advanced tab then make sure the padding is set to zero. So set that to zero. Then next is the CSS classes. So we're going to be defining a class name on the parent container. And the class name is simple. It is simply dd-mixed-grid. So now that we've set that on the parent container, we already have some things happening on the page. The next thing we need to do now is define our default parameters. You can already define it within your global CSS, but if you want something different for this section, then you can go under the custom CSS and then start with saying selector. Then the four parameters we can define here are the content max width, which is for the box content area. Then we can set the gap between the two columns. Then the gutter, which is the padding at the left and right edge. And finally, how much percentage the first column takes up. So we start by defining those four variables. The first variable is the content width. So we say double hyphen dd dash content dash max dash width. And then set the value. In this example, I'm using 1360 pixels, but by default, Elementor uses 1140 pixels. Then the next thing we need to set is the gap. From the example, you can see that the gap is set to zero. So we we'll set the gap to zero here. So dd gap zero and then close it. 
But one thing you need to make sure is that it must have a unit. So if you see a set zero and then the layout broke, so you have to make sure that the gap has a unit. So even zero must have a unit. So you have to say zero pixels or zero M or anything, but it must have a unit. Same thing with the gutter and the content max width. They must always have a unit. So now that we have done that, the next thing is the gutter. So double hyphen DD dash gutter. And then we set that to 10 pixels, which is the default for Elementor. Or you can use your own variable. And then finally, we set how much percentage do we want the first column to take. We want it to take up 60%. So we'll say double hyphen DD call one, then PCT for percentage. And then I'll say 60. This one must not have a unit. That's the difference. The first three must have a unit, but the percentage must not have a unit. So that's all for the parent container. Now we can go ahead and start styling the child containers. So let me go ahead. And if you want to open up the navigator easily, all you have to do is press Control or Command and I. That will open up or close the inspector. So I have the inspector open already. I like to rename my container so that I can easily understand what they are for. So I'll rename the first container to Content Wrapper. And the second container, I'll say it is image wrapper. So now I know what my two containers are for. So we'll start with the content wrapper. Then we'll do the same thing. So under the layout tab, make sure the content width is set to full width. And then the width itself is set to 100%. That's the same thing we do for all three containers. The content width will be set to full width. And then the width itself is set to 100%. So now we are done with the layout section. Then we'll go to the advanced tab. And this is where the magic happens. So first set the padding to zero. So there's no padding or you can put the padding since it's the text content. Is the image as important that we have no padding. But for the text, you might want to put the padding there. But for this example, I'll just put no padding. Then the magic happens within the CSS classes. So go over to the CSS classes. I'll leave a link to explain all the different classes. But basically, we we'll start by defining the parent class name again, which is dd-mixed-grid, then double underscore, and then we we'll define what property we want for the child. So basically, if we want the child to be in the column one, we say call one, and it to be in the column one box area. If you want it to be column two, say call two, and to be in the column two boxed area. If you want it to be call one full, say the one double hyphen full, and then it will expand within the column one to the edge of the screen. If you want it to be column two, you do the same thing, just change the name to call two and then full. So in this example, we want it to be column one only. So just delete the extra terms there and now it's on the column one and it is boxed by default so that's it for the first container we can now go ahead and put in our content so I'll just copy this and paste it in there copy the second one and paste it in there and that's it we are done with the first container now for the second container which is the image wrapper let me make sure it is highlighted then the same thing, make sure it is full width. And then the width itself, make sure it is 100%. So I'll just delete that and it goes back to default 100%. Then go under the advanced tab and then set the padding to zero, similar to the first case. And we'll do the same thing now. We'll go to the classes and then we we'll define, starting with the parent class name. So DD mixed grid. This is how the BEM methodology works. You now do the double underscore. And then now we choose the column two. So we say call two. Right now it's boxed. We want it to be full. So double hyphen full. And our layout is done. We have done with the main layout. It is fully responsive. All we have to do now is style our image and our text. So let me 
go ahead and add in an image widget and choose the image that I want. In this case, it will be this image. We have that set up. From this point, you have a decision to make. You can either choose to use an image or some people prefer to use the background image on the container because the width and height of the image may start to play part in the whole layout, but you don't want the width and height to affect anything. Or you can use a CSS, which I'll link to in the description below, which all you have to do is go to the image under the advanced tab, just go to the CSS classes and then give it the class name of DD dash BG dash figure. And it will make it act like a background image for desktop and tablet. And then it returns back to being an image on mobile. So that makes our layout work out just fine. And then next, let's style the parent container so that it looks like the example we have above. So I'll go to the parent container, make sure it's selected. As you can see, it's highlighted. Then I'll give it a background color, a background type. I'll choose the background color that I used. Then I'll give it a bit of minimum height so that the image can have some room to breathe. So under the layout tab, I'll give it a minimum height. Let me just use VH in this example. And then I'll say something like 70 VH. Then I'll go to the content wrapper and make sure that it is now in the center. So go to the layout tab and make sure that the justify content is set to center. And then we want to add some padding to the top and bottom. So you can go to your advanced CSS and maybe change rather than having zero all through, you might want to give a top and bottom padding. So let me say the top is the 40 pixels and the bottom is 40 pixels as well. Normally I already have CSS variables set up for all of this padding. So I don't usually set this padding even using the panel. But for this example, I'm just showing you what you can do. So we have those set up. Now that's it. So let's publish it. And now we can preview it on the front end. So let's preview it. I see we get our layout. We have this background searching to the edge of the screen because it's on the parent container, but it's not showing up because of the image itself. So now let's go ahead and inspect and let's drop this down and see what happens when it gets to mobile. See, it remains with this gutter, which is what we want. And everything just works out well. We set up that 40 pixel row gap. And that is what is happening here. And that's it. We have our padding on the left and our padding on the right when it gets to mobile. But when it gets back to the desktop view, everything just flows back correctly and there is no issues. So yeah, that's how we can just get our layout to look as beautiful as it is for our hero section. As you can see in the final setup, we get this beautiful hero section. And yeah, that's it. If this video has helped you out, please do leave a thumbs up so that I know that the video helped you out and write in the comment section because it helps me to know that I'm reaching out to people. And if you have any better method, please do leave it in the comment section. I like to read your comments to know if there are easier or better ways to do it. And until next time, keep designing and have fun. Bye.